homeostasis is the first concept you will learn in medical physiology it's more than a concept it's going to be the underlying theme of your entire physiology course today we are going to uh, discuss this homeostasis in a conventional way that is how it was originally proposed by claude bernard that is stability of internal environment so what he suggested as internal environment let's start with uh, a single cell organism like bacteria bacteria can survive in uh, you know extreme temperatures like different types of bacteria adapt to different environmental conditions like some bacteria live under uh, you know boiling temperatures and some bacteria lives in freezing conditions like less than 0 degree centigrade different species of bacteria has adapted to survive under different environmental conditions like temperature oxygen ph and so many other things though they have ability to adapt to a different condition over period of time a given bacteria if for example these bacteria cryophilic bacteria we call them which lives under sub zero temperature if we put them in a higher temperature they may not thrive a single bacteria has evolved to survive only under a particular environmental condition so if we change it it is going to die but when it come to multicellular organisms they create a, a micro environment surrounding their cells uh, we call it as a internal environment it actually their body so this internal environment here as these are the group of cells and this is a body of the organism and you can see this is an external to the body so there is a controlled environment surrounding their cells which is called as a internal environment and the actual surrounding of the entire organism is called as a external environment in the multicellular organisms try to control the internal environments variables like oxygen level temperature ph and so many other things this is called as the stability of life conditions in the internal environment if you take a human body uh, it has trillions of cells like the cells inside or uh, of different different organs are going to perform different functions like an rbc is going to transport oxygen a nerve cell is going to transfer information to other cells and a muscle cell is going to produce force so there are many cells which will perform different functions but collectively they are all trying to maintain the conditions in the internal environment as a stable constant one and uh, it's surrounded by the protective cells and there are exchange cells which will transfer or exchange energy and uh, biomolecules with the environment this is the conventional way of looking at it that is the in internal environment means uh, extracellular fluid and where the cells and other things survive and the homeostasis is maintaining the conditions of the extracellular fluid that is internal environment so this is the conventional way of looking at it though we today we understand that even single cellular organisms maintain their own internal environment that is within the cells it you know it is also considered as a homeostasis so now we understand that entire body not just the extracellular fluid is considered as an internal environment the cells produce it and they all be take the benefit out of it also you know they survive within this constant life conditions this was originally proposed by uh, claude bernard he is doing an experiment over here he is a big fan of experimental science and he is also called, a, called as a father of modern physiology let's see what he has said about this concept maintenance of stable milieu interior milieu interior is french and uh, in english it is internal environment he has said all the vital mechanisms however varied they may be here we are referring to all vital mechanisms like uh, respiration excretion locomotion and all the other functions however varied they may be have one common goal that is to maintain the uniformity of the conditions of the internal environment the life conditions we are referring here as this oxygen level uh, ph temperature glucose and all these things so he said the stability of this internal environment is the condition for free and independent life though claude bernard gave the concept the word homeostasis was coined by walter kenan he further expanded the concept and popularized it in his book wisdom of life and he also coined the term 
flight or fight response also let's see what he has said in his book some of the important uh, ideas were constancy in an open system requires mechanisms that act to maintain the system open system here referred to the uh, fact that human body continuously exchanges like substances and energy with the external environment if something is called as a closed system then there is nothing is exchanged with the environment so human body is an open system because continuously substances are exchanged with the environment so such system is called as a steady state like a system has a stable internal environment but there is continuous exchange with the environment happening all the time a stable state happens uh, even in another condition called as an equilibrium where the internal environment of a system is constant because there is no net exchange happening between the system and its environment equilibrium is not compatible with life because to sustain life processes energy is required which must be gained from the environment and other things like waste products are to be lost to the environment so the condition maintained within the body that is a constant internal environment despite the fact that there is a continuous exchange happens with the environment this is called as a steady state and steady state conditions require that tendency towards change are automatically met with factors that resist the change steady state indicates that a variable in a system is kept constant though it is continuously being added or removed from the system maintenance of steady state require energy and a control system which matches the input and output of the variable for example the temperature of a human body is maintained at 37 degrees by balancing continuous heat production by the human body and heat loss to the surroundings any maintained variable including the temperature cannot be exactly constant but it is maintained within the narrow range so called a relatively constant value so that's why it is used in the definition of homeostasis homeostasis is the maintenance of steady state that is a relatively constant internal physical and chemical conditions in the body by coordinated physiological control system so he also adds homeostasis does not occur by chance but is a result of organized self government and yes this is true and that is what is the function of a homeostatic control system let's see what it is homeostasis involve dynamic mechanism that detect and respond to deviations in physiological variables from their set point values by initiating an effect or response that restore the variables to the original optimal physiological range so this are the key words um in this definition we are going to understand this by uh, using an example of uh, air conditioner the air conditioner in your room is maintaining a variable that is uh, room temperature and let's say the room temperature is 30 degrees and you set it up at 28 degrees you know through your remote so the value you are setting is the set point and the actual well level of the variable is 30 once this is set the exact value is detected by things called a sensor which is going to detect what is the actual value value and it is going to compare with the set point and if there is a difference then it is going to generate a response that is the ac is going to generate a response of sending cool air into the room so thereby eventually it restores the room temperature and when it restores it's not going to be exactly maintained at 28 degree centigrade there may be a small range for example if it goes below 27 it may switch off and then it may go above 29 then it may start working so there is a range in which the room temperature is maintained though we are giving a set point of 28 there is a optimal range in which the room temperature is maintained and this is the explanation for all the key points in a homeostatic control system let's discuss the components of homeostatic control system as we discussed above there is a sensor which is going to detect a changes in the variable and it is going to send this information to a feedback controller which is a part of the central comparator and it compares set point value with the sensor detected value and if there is a change then it is going to send the information to the effector 
which is going to influence the regulator variable again which is this is called as a feedback loop feedback loop and uh, let's there are two types one is a positive and a negative feedback loop let's see each of the things with an example let's say there is a regulator variable at a particular level there is a disturbance which causes the regulated variable to increase and the sensor detects the change sends to the feedback controller and it detects the difference and now it initiates effector response to put down this regulator variable so that it comes back to its normal level again let's see this negative feedback with an example of plasma glucose level maintenance here the regulated variable is plasma glucose let's consider a disturbance that is consumption of food which cause the glucose levels to increase and this is sensed by the sensor which is located in the beta cells within the pancreas and it's going to sense the difference between the set point and the set point value and the actual variable value and if it is higher the actual value is higher it is going to release insulin so this is the pancreatic beta cell which is going to function as the sensor and the feedback controller and the effector is the insulin the insulin is going to act on various body tissues and going to bring the glucose level down so here original change is increase but actual response of this control system is to minimize the change so this is the uh, basic concept of a negative feedback system in a negative feedback system the stability is maintained a positive feedback there is a regulator variable and if a disturbance causes it to increase which is detected by a sensor and feedback controller and ultimately the effector is going to again cause more and more increase you know it is going to do in a same direction whatever the original change direction the effector is also going to augment this change let's see this with an example uh, opening of voltage gated sodium channel nav stands for voltage gated sodium channel in action potential here the regulated variable is membrane potential membrane potential is going to be maintained at minus 70 millivolt but when there is a small depolarization disturbance this is going to be sensed by sensor within the voltage gated sodium channels we call it as a voltage sensor and this is going to communicate with the other components of this sodium voltage gated sodium channel and they are going to open this when the nav opens it's going to cause more and more depolarization so if the original change is from minus 70 to minus 60 then opening of more and more sodium channels is going to depolarize it to let's say 0 or even plus 10 millivolts so this is what happens during an action potential this is an example of positive feedback so positive feedback is essential for uh, promoting a change in the system they are not essential for maintaining the stability as such of the variable but they promote change in a condition as but this is essential uh, in a large picture this is essential for the homeostasis or the survival of the organism even the positive feedbacks are essential though sometimes the positive feedbacks can work you know in a vicious cycle and may produce you know deterioration effect um, let's see one other mechanism that is feed forward past two mechanisms are feedback loops now this is a feed forward mechanisms and this is glucagon like polypeptide 1 induced insulin release right here the regulated variable is again glucose and uh, this is first i am going to draw the feedback loop uh, when there is a disturbance like when is food consumption and glucose levels are sensed by the insulin and ultimately um, sorry the beta cells and ultimately it is going to release the insulin and going to decrease the glucose level this is a feedback loop but sometimes even before the change happens the disturbances which are causing the change in the regulated variable are sensed by other uh, controllers like a feed forward controller which is going to influence this regulated variable through either a feedback controller or a effector that here directly insulin is released by the presence of food in the intestine some cells sense the presence of food in the intestine and releases glp1 which is going to stimulate the insulin release though the regulated variable is glucose which has not changed yet 
even before the change happens the glucose levels are going to be regulated by the insulin levels so this is called as a feed forward mechanisms here though the feedback mechanisms both positive and negative operates only when the regulated variable changes but even before the regulated variable change the disturbance itself is sensed by a feed forward controller and it proactively maintains the system sometimes this is referred as anticipatory control system okay so uh, uh, thanks for watching our next lecture is on negative feedback gain stay tuned